Harry's wife, part 97.48. President Harry's wife. Yes, Harry's wife, with her delusions of becoming president of that great nation, the United States of America. Rather apt that today, on Traitorous Colonist Day, that uh, is the opportunity to analyse further observations about Harry's wife's political ambition. This is courtesy of the Mail Online, with an article by Meghan McCain. But before I launch into that, it is quite typical of many narcissists that their narcissism drives them to aim high. Narcissism will compel a narcissist to excel, not all, but many, in order to achieve the prime aims, to get the best job, which then allows the receipt of money, residual benefit, and that money can then be utilised for control and fuel, to get positions of status and power, which again facilitate the prime aims. And of course, becoming President of the United States is one of the most powerful jobs on the planet. It requires, of course, certain abilities and behaviours, and few are capable of undertaking the role, even fewer doing so successfully. And it could potentially be the political graveyard for many that seek to become the president and fail. However, Harry's wife, driven by her own delusion and belief that she would make an excellent president, still has those political desires. And, while she may not say it out loud, it's quite clear that she's somebody that would want to become President of the United States. Her narcissism, operating as mid-range, means that she would fall short of what is required to get to that point and do so. Not only to get to that point, but even if, by some quirk of the time-space continuum, she suddenly became President, she would be completely useless. Her narcissism isn't up to the job of enabling her to do it in an effective fashion. We've seen this over and over again with regard to the way that she keeps fucking things up. But let's find out what Meghan McCain has to say about these political aspirations and how they might impact upon somebody like Harry's wife for the purposes of becoming president and, of course, more importantly, viewed through the prism of her narcissism. Harry's wife is suffering serious delusions if she truly believes that she will ever become president of the United States of America. There, I said it. Now, can we please stop entertaining this abject stupidity? The first inklings of this ridiculous idea surfaced in 2020 when a close friend of the royal told Vanity Fair that the Duchess refused to give up her American citizenship because she had designs on the White House. Grandiosity, sense of entitlement. Last year, she fueled the fantasy again with reports that she was networking with senior Democrats. After the tragedy in Uvalde, Texas, she arrived out of the blue for a tasteless photo op at a memorial for the victims. See parts passing for dissection of those behaviours. And this week, she set the rumour mill spinning again when she sat down with feminist icon Gloria Steinem for an interview with Vogue magazine, arguably the least influential political magazine in the country, Zynga, to talk about the Supreme Court decision overturning Roe v. Wade. See parts pass him for dissection of that. Harry's wife recounted Prince Harry's guttural <laughs> reaction to the ruling because my husband is a feminist. She went on to say that she and Gloria will be taking a trip to D.C. together soon. Yes, I'm sure you will. McCain writes, I didn't always feel this way about Harry's wife. I, like millions of other Americans, first heard her name when she got engaged to Prince Harry. Everything about their relationship seemed hopeful and positive. Their union appeared to symbolise progress and modernity. Harry's wife is older than Harry, divorced and biracial. She appeared to be independent and vocal about the world in a way that we had not seen among other modern royals, seemed being the 
that appeared rather being the operative word. It was exciting for Americans to finally share in the pomp and circumstance of a royal wedding, unless you count Jay-Z and Beyonce. But four years later, my opinion of both has shifted. I didn't understand their need to air all the royal laundry in a dirty fashion to Oprah, like a confessional in an episode of the Kardashians. As you know from parts passing, that was the assertion of control, drawing of fuel, character traits, and residual benefits through facade management, through insult, provocation, and pity plays. But I still felt inclined, McCain writes, to publicly support Harry's wife because the allegations of racism in the royal family were so disturbing. Then Prince Harry started trashing his new adoptive country as Harry's wife cheered him on. He called the First Amendment bonkers, quite simply because he's thick, and it went on from there with increasingly woke and judgmental rhetoric about conservative values and anything that wasn't straight out of the Obama ideological playbook. In fact, Harry and Harry's wife don't really do much of anything anymore, except sign podcast deals that fail to produce podcasts and bitch about everything that is wrong with America. Provocation, smearing, assertion of control. Which brings us back to Harry's wife's alleged presidential ambitions. First, it is a privilege to run for the President of the United States, and these are desperate times in our country. We need more than an XC-list actress turned royal with no civic or political experience to speak of. Ouch. Plenty of challenge fuel there. Marrying a prince doesn't make you a leader. It makes you a celebrity. And I thought Democrats were sick and tired of celebrity presidents. To be president, you have to put yourself in the shoes of good and decent American voters, the same people that they seem to constantly disparage. Harry's wife and Harry epitomise the out-of-touch, hypocritical liberal who lectures us about environmentalism while flying around on gas-guzzling private jets. Hypocrisy, sense of entitlement. Second, and most obviously, she doesn't have what it takes. You want to be president and make it to the Emerald City? You've got to make your way through Oz first, and there's nothing glamorous about that. You'll be spending all your time on the move, on buses or commercial planes. Forget about your private jet or even first class. That'll be seen for what it is, elitist. You'll be stopping at roadside cafes, VFW halls, and the homes of ordinary citizens who are nice enough to support your campaign. You'll talk to voters at firehouses, local town meetings, pancake breakfasts, and literally everything in between. You'll be eating whatever is available, which more often than not are donuts and fast food breakfast. That's right, no keto, organic, or artisanal anything. You will go to the Iowa State Fair and eat deep-fried Oreos, though on second thought, that might make this entire delusional ordeal worth it. Most of your day will be spent with a small team of advisors, but the most talented ones will have already hitched their wagons to a candidate with better prospects. Ouch, another zinger there. You will have to stand in front of packed rooms and convince voters why you are the best choice and answer difficult questions. Questions that I am certain you have never thought about, like, how do you feel about ethanol in Iowa? How will you help veterans suffering from the devastating effects of exposure to burn pits? What are you going to do about the humanitarian crisis at the southern border? And, maybe for most difficult of all for you, why should Americans want a British royal as our first gentleman? People will tell you how much they hate you to your face, and they have no reason to trust you. You will get sweaty. Your makeup won't stay in place. You won't be able to wear $6,000 designer outfits. You will go to places like Sioux Falls, Sioux City, Dixville Notch, New Hampshire, Greenville, South Carolina, and tiny towns in the South. You will go to sad regions of Nevada that have been savaged by the broken promises of past politicians. Places filled with people weighed down by years of shattered dreams. You will have to check your ego at the door, because none of this is about you. This is about making our country a better place. Oh, and your children, of whom you are so protective, will be in the spotlight. The American public will expect you to bring them on the campaign trail and on stage at your rallies. America elects a president and a first family. Now, does this sound like something that Harry's wife and Prince Harry will subject themselves to? Of course not. Harry's wife, trust me, you don't want to run for president, and I can assure you the American public doesn't have any interest in voting for you anyway. I suggest you stick to giving softball interviews and showing up to cocktail parties.
That's what you're good at. You are royalty, remember. Well, no pulling of the punches there from Meghan McCain, and what she states is largely accurate, that she details the nitty-gritty and the grind of a presidential campaign, and it's not something that Harry's wife is suited for whatsoever. Of course, this is not going to stop Harry's wife from believing that she can do it. She believes that she should be in politics, because she believes, driven by the delusion of her narcissism, that she has something to offer, that she understands people, that she empathises with their situation. After all, bringing some donuts and chips and sandwiches to Uvalde means she surely understands. Sending some more donuts and sandwiches and such like and bagels to the Mums for Action in relation to gun control demonstrates, of course, she understands. Writing a letter talking about parental leave demonstrates that she understands. Utilising the PR agency so that she can have a sit-down with Gloria Steinem and Jessica Yellen to talk about a subject which showed how hopelessly she is out of her depth that she managed her facade doesn't stop her because she believes that she understands the, order, the issues of the day and that she understands people. She doesn't. But what do the people in the comments section of the Daily Mail have to say about all of this? It's well worth dipping into. So Believer 666 states, Please do this, Megs. The humiliation would be a wonderful reminder that she is a nobody, a glorified polo cheerleader. Eileen, she couldn't handle criticism in the United Kingdom. She fled. Assertion of control by withdrawal. There is no way this woke hypocrite could withstand the close scrutiny and vicious criticism of the US election process. No one asks you if you are okay. Japara, didn't you know Harry's wife doesn't have to go on a campaign trail? She only has to say she wants to be president and Harry will tell everyone that this is what she's going to be because what Harry's wife wants, Harry's wife gets. Missing Aussie, Megs wants the glory, but not the hard work. She's not cut out for this type of life. Far too woke. IVM Invenium, the Republicans, any Republican would annihilate her in a debate. Charlie Zero, she really thinks she's something, doesn't she? Toronto won. She has a better chance of being the president than she does of being an A or B list actress. Ooh, burn. Nanny 56. Harry's wife is in for a rude awakening, if this is truly her plan. American politics and its mudslinging is vicious. Her opponents would not think twice in detailing every misstep she has ever made. And of course, if she has ever thrust into such a situation, all she would ever do is dole out pity plays. Why are they being nasty to me? They're being racist. They're being horrible to me. Nobody's asking me if I'm okay. If Harry's wife were to happen upon this article, it would of course be challenge fuel to her. If she were to read some of these comments, they similarly would be challenge fuel. They're talking about her, which is great, so she receives fuel from that, but of course they're criticising her, putting her down, demonstrating her shortcomings, which threatens her sense of control, and would result in her having to assert control as ever by indirectly doing so, complaining to other people about the way that she's treated, or staying in a position of withdrawal and basically flipping off all of these individuals as the Dilbury maker that she is in order to assert control over them. But once again, it demonstrates that the political ambitions that she may well have are not going to lead anywhere. And the article demonstrates all of the things about her that mean that she would struggle to get to a political position and all of the things that are involved with it, demonstrating again how difficult she would find it. And whilst, of course, many presidents are narcissists, their form of narcissism enables them to be best equipped in the role, to first of all get there and then to stay there. Harry's wife's narcissism, the type that she is, doesn't equip her suitably. And she would never get anywhere close. But that's never going to stop her from deciding that she might want to do it because of the delusion, the deluded world in which she lives. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.